here is the uh, here is an application you can say of uh, of the use of mixed strategies in a zero sum game from a tale from a sherlock holmes novel okay so the story is as, as follows holmes is leaving from london and he wants to eventually get to this place called dover dover is the point from which you can you, if you know the gates on the coast of uh, of england from there you can actually get a ship to go to the european continent he wants to get to dover now he, that's where he was planning to go but then as he is leaving he sees on the platform that his nemesis uh, this man called moriarty actually sees him on the train so the train is pulling off pulling out of the platform and moriarty is on the uh, on the platform and he sees that sherlock holmes is on the train okay now sherlock holmes has tick, has a ticket till dover he can go till dover that's one option or he can get off at canterbury which is an intermediate stop the only intermediate stop okay now he knows that moriarty is going to follow him all right and now there are two possibilities here either moriarty himself also goes to canterbury takes another train to get to canterbury or he takes another train and gets off at dover okay so based on what actually happens here are the there here are the probabilities that will work here are here is here are the uh, the various things that could work out if holmes reaches canterbury and moriarty also reaches canterbury the payoff for holmes is the probability of his survival okay in which case now if he if he doesn't if if holmes reaches canterbury Mor moriarty also reaches canterbury then holmes is killed for sure so the probability of survival is zero for holmes okay holmes is looking to maximize this particular number uh, the the probability of survival if holmes reaches uh, if holmes reaches canterbury and moriarty reaches dover then in that case moriarty can retrace himself back from dover to canterbury and find homes somewhere in the in you know in the in the country so in that case moriarty basically we will assume that homes gets killed with probability 0.5 in that case okay so his survival is probability of survival is 0.5 then the payoff therefore for moriarty is minus 0.5 now if if homes reaches dover but moriarty gets off at canterbury in that case homes survives for sure okay so his probability of survival then is is one so okay so the probability of survival uh, so the payoff that homes then receives is is one and the payoff that moriarty receives is minus 1 so actually i should no, i don't need this uh, second digit at all let's remove the second digit probability of survival for homes here is 0 probability of survival for homes here is is 0 0.5 probability of survival for homes here is 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 1 and pro if they both reach dover then the probability of survival again for homes is 0 moriarty wants to uh, reduce this probability as much as possible and homes wants to maximize this okay all right now if let's think of the following situation suppose moriarty knew what holmes would do okay then what is the probability that of uh, of survival for holmes zero if moriarty knew where holmes is headed he will just follow him there and and kill him there right if he knows he is going to get off at canterbury he'll go he'll go till canterbury and kill him there if he go if he knows that he's uh, homes is going to dover he'll go he'll go to dover and find him there all right so so if if moriarty knows what homes is going to play then Holmes is killed is killed for sure right okay so now here is where the mixed strategies become useful okay so Holmes now instead of doing this what Holmes is going to do is so Holmes rolls a dice okay now and if it if it comes if it shows 
okay, a fair dice. If it shows 1 or, or 2, then he, he will he just goes to Dover. Okay, and if it is any of the other numbers, he, he goes to Canterbury. Okay, so, else he goes to Canterbury. Now, if it is 1 or 2, which means with, so he is going to go to Dover with probability 1 third and he goes to Canterbury with probability 2 thirds, alright. Now, the, the, here is the thing, okay. What is, okay, let us, let us now calculate what is the probability now of survival for homes. Okay. Let us look at the two options for from the point of view of Moriarty. So, we will just okay. So, Holmes was going to play Dover with probability one third and Canterbury with probability two thirds, okay. So, he has Canterbury with probability the two third probability of Canterbury and one third probability of Dover, right. And what were let us write out the payoffs once again. So, it is 0 for 0 0 and uh, 0.5 and 1. So, 0 0 1 and 0.5, okay. Now, let us look at the, uh, let us look at the payoff that, uh, that Moriarty now sees from this. Okay. What is the payoff? Now that the, if this is what Holmes is going to play, all right, he does not know where Holmes is now headed. Okay. He just knows that Holmes is going to go to Dover with probability one third and to Canterbury now with probability two thirds. Moriarty just knows that. Okay. See, so, uh, so I think I, I was not very clear. I was getting a little uh, hassled with this. See, the main point is, see, if Moriarty knows what Holmes is going to play in the sense that he knows where Holmes is headed then he will just follow him. Now also Moriarty, let us assume Moriarty knows what Holmes is going to play, but what is he going to play? He is going to play a role of dice. He knows that Holmes is going to do this, that he is going to play, he's go, if, if it is going to turn out, if the dice shows 1 or 2, he is going to go to Dover. If it is going to, if it is, if the dice is going to show uh, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, he is going to go to uh, Canterbury. So, okay, so he, so what, Holmes, what Moriarty knows is that Holmes is going to play Dover with probability one third and Canterbury with probability two thirds. Now, with this, let us see what the, what are the payoffs for, for Moriarty now in this case. So, so the payoff that uh, Moriarty sees is going to be two thirds, two thirds into zero plus one third, right, in the first row. So, so here what the payoff for Moriarty is going to be two thirds into zero into one third, which is just one third. And what about this one? It is again going to be one third, right. So, what has happened as a result? Moriarty has no, has, has actually now is, has been left ambivalent. He does not, even if he knows the probabilities with which these things are being chosen, he, he does not know actually which one is going to be played. And both are now equally good for him. Okay. In a, so now, what is the best response for Moriarty in this? What what can he respond with? He can go to Canterbury. He can go to Dover. He can go to Canterbury with probability 0.5. He can go to Dover with probability 0.5. He can go. He can do whatever he wants. Basically, all of them are equally good. Right. So, what more, what Holmes has basically done is he's made him himself uh, made uh, Moriarty ambivalent or indifferent between his alternatives. Okay. All right. Okay. So, this is, this is point one. Now, what is now the probability that, so therefore, Moriarty can, uh, uh, now, now, okay. So, is a best response for Moriarty. He can play whatever he wants, all of those are best responses, 
okay now keeping this in mind keeping that this guy could you know have a certain best response if suppose now uh, holmes who had to decide what is the probability with which he will he should he should pick one third and what is the probability with which he should pick two, uh, what is the probability with which he should pick uh, canterbury and what is the probability with which he should pick dover what what holmes would effectively be doing is is doing is trying to find the max followed max max min of this particular value he would look at the worst case best response that uh, worst case damage that moriarty could do to him and then try to minimize that worst case damage right okay so that now what now what we know is that this max min is actually equal to min max that is what we just uh, we showed in the previous in the previous class in other words this and and therefore this uh, a, a, you will get a, a saddle point of this would be one where would be a distribution for moriarty such that when moriarty plays that distribution it should be optimal for holmes to continue to play his distribution okay so what i will show you now is actually this two third one third is in fact the max min or equivalently his own security strategy okay so you can actually check this so suppose more so I, as you see that every all of these strategy any strategy is a best response to uh, or any strategy is a best response for moriarty but you can take a particular so therefore moriarty can respond with anything let's take this strategy for moriarty so suppose moriarty chooses this okay so he plays Canter uh, uh, canterbury with probability 1/3 and dover with probability uh, with probability two thirds now let's see what is the what is the probability of survival he says one third into one third into zero plus two third into 0.5 so that again becomes out here you again have out again you have one third here and you do the same thing here you again find one third so with so what has happened as a result of this you see holmes has come up with a coin toss moriarty has also come up with a coin a coin toss or or a roll of dice essentially both have come up with mixed strategies such that given one guy's mixed strategy the other guy becomes indifferent between what to choose right now because the other guy is indifferent you can pick any best response but that best response has to also match up with with uh, with what the first guy considered as the or as as your security strategy or or as your worst case so you may as well play the worst case therefore each of them may as well play the worst case okay so effectively what has happened is this 2/3 1/3 and 1/3 2/3 becomes a saddle point for this particular game and this is the nature of saddle points in a zero sum game when one when a player what, what it it what a saddle point tends to do is is it tends to make the other player indifferent between a bunch of strategies in particular even a pure strategy becomes a best response but that doesn't mean the player will actually play a pure strategy it for the for the other player to play a pure strategy it all the first strategy that you started with also has to be a best response to that pure strategy got it so 2/3 1/3 for for homes Two third, one third for Holmes is uh, is a uh, if to if Holmes plays two third, one third, Moriarty can play whatever he wants. But then, if Moriarty plays whatever he wants, will Holmes continue to play two third, one third? No. If it's only when Holmes, if it's only when Moriarty plays one third, two third, that Holmes will want to play two third, one third. Okay. So this particular this here now is a is a saddle point or a Nash equilibrium of this particular game. Okay. Two third uh, the this this strategy. So the uh, two third C one third D for Holmes and uh, one third C two third D. For Moriarty is a saddle point. Okay, ठीक है. So we found a saddle point now. No, no, no. Greater than equal to. What is what equality holds? Moriarty 
strategy plays one third two thirds then no matter what strategy homes plays the way of winning the game right so, so that's why it's a study yeah yeah so there are uh, so so you can argue this in many different ways so what's one of the th reasons is that it equalizes the upper and lower values also so one third two third gives you uh, the exact same up lower va uh, value of the game which is one third and likewise two third one third for homes also gives you that exact value. that's another way of justifying that this is a this is a saddle point okay all right so so now let us calculate what is the pro now given this is what they are going to do in the case of a coin toss okay what is the probability of survival now for homes so probability of survival is basically now just the average payoff of this right and you can compute that so what what is that that's going to be so he survives with probability How much is this? This is one by three, right? So this becomes one by three. Okay, so this is uh, one uh, one by three into one by three. You can so this is this two and point five will cancel off. This is two two uh, two by nine, and this is one by nine. That's one by three. Okay, all right. So this is so this probability is one by three. So in short, by doing this particular mixed strategy, now Holmes survives with probability one third. earlier he was surviving with probability 0 and remember the point is that he survives with probability 1/3 even if even if moriarty knows that this is what holmes is going to do okay so even if moriarty knows that holmes is going to cross a coin or, or roll a dice and choose to go to dover with probability 2/3 and go to uh, sorry probability 1/3 and go to canterbury with probability 2/3 even if he knows this whole plan still he survives with probability 1/3 and the reason what is the reason for that and the re the main reason for this is the inherent nature of randomness when you toss a coin he moriarty may know that this is the probability with which various things are going to play out but he doesn't know actually what will play out okay this is this is a, a manifest this is exactly what mixed strategies are doing essentially in fact why why moriarty even homes doesn't know where he is going to go when he is going to roll the dice right he only knows that with certain chance he is going to go here is certain chance he is going to go there and because he because you do not know the outcome because moriarty doesn't know the outcome moriarty is also forced to uh, in turn you know you can say he can also do the same thing and therefore they both they both effectively try to make, fool each other and fool each other to the point where they have no preference over their pure strategies anymore both pure strategies are just as good for both because then you have really made them indifferent that is the ultimate uh, you know ultimate sort of ambiguity you can or or uh, uh, yeah ambiguity you can create right in a game that you a player the opponent opposing player has no way of has no sort of way to distinguish between whether this is better or that is better right so this is this is effectively what has happened here that by by doing this roll of dice you um, homes has ensured effectively that that he 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 survives with probability is survives with probability 1/3 and and that is because even if that even if you know the, even if a, uh, the mixed strategy itself is known the exact action that he will be taking is not known okay so this this that is the smoke screen that uh, you know a, a a a randomized that randomization basically creates okay all right so there are uh, you can uh, so this is this is just uh, this is one more example of of why you know you should uh, you can say is some, uh, so how players can use randomization and also of of why you should allow players to do randomization because you can see that there is a there is a there is an actual you know strategic benefit involved in randomization all right okay okay now this let's just play this thing out a little bit further and see where how this uh, this shapes up so one of the things we just saw was that when 
when a player plays his a mix strategy the opponent has any uh, you know any pure strategy is his best response now technically what really hap is what's happening is actually this here is this is a result that we have seen before see remember we wrote this out that when we wrote right min over of y in y max of z in capital z y transpose a z this was the same as the min over y of max over j y transpose a j right so what what is the reason for, what, what the reason for this was basically for a fixed y this inner objective was actually linear in z so all you had to do was pick out the element in the row which had the largest weight and that's what this max over j does now what this is effectively saying is that if i fix a y even if i fix the saddle point y right the security strategy y okay the best response to that is going can is going to be any set of pure strategies which give you the which have the the where y transpose a is the largest right a y any j for which y transpose a j is largest is the best response to that and in particular any mixing over those j's is also a best response right so so which means that for any y so once of once you fix one player strategy the other player strategy uh, other players uh, has has a uh, he the uh, for the other player the problem becomes linear and he has to just pick the one that is you know the weight that is largest so any j that maximizes y transpose a j is a best response is the best response of the column player okay so like and the same is true also for the minimizing player okay so if you if you the same can be written also for if i write this this is still max over z z is clear okay but that doesn't mean that you can restrict to pure strategy best responses a best response is j a pure strategy uh, best uh, so a pure strategy j is a best response to a mixed strategy y a pure strategy i is a mix best response to mixed strategy z but that does not mean that i and j are going to be best responses to each other okay so so the uh, so a saddle point will be therefore necessarily a saddle point will be one will have this property that it so so clearly a okay so now if 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 j is a, a strategy that maximizes y transpose aj okay and if there are multiple such j's then in any saddle point what would the uh, what would the the uh, what would the column player be playing can the column player play a z so any so column player z mixed uh, saddle point strategy has to be a best response so, so so let's say i pick y at y star okay okay which is uh, one component of the saddle point now any pure strategy j that is a best response to this that maximizes this is a best response now what about a mixed strategy what kind of mixed strategies will be best responses to this it will be a combination of those j's that maximize this right because if if a j is not amongst the larger if for that j this is not amongst the largest right if it if it's a little bit less than the largest 
then it doesn't make any sense to give that that component a, a positive weight because you are unnecessarily reducing your own uh, reducing your own pure what you would want to do is randomize over the best pure strategies correct so the the so if if i take y as y star here if i make y as y star then the best response z there will be a best response z star to this in which the player has randomized only over those j's that maximize this okay and likewise out of those z's that there that also there will be multiple such z's and out of those z's there will be one such z such that if you take fix that z then the maximizing y in response to that would be a y that is supported only on this only on the i's that minimize this okay and then a y a pair y star z star that basically keep each other in equilibrium in this way will therefore be a saddle point okay so in other words in any saddle point no player is going to give weight to a strategy that is giving the giving give weight to a pure strategy that is giving anything less than the best uh, the best best possible uh, response so each player basically distributes his probability distribution over the pure strategies that are a best response to the other guys given the other guys strategy is this clear so in other words if if so in short in summary if if y star is what's chosen by the row player then column z star will be such that it is supported on these j's the j's that maximize this and y star in turn will be supported on the i's that maximize this with z replaced by z star with z star here the ones that may, uh, sorry that the ones that minimize this with z replaced by z star okay so now so let's let's actually see an application of this now so how, how we could use this particular fact 